Welcome to the Prime Strength YouTube channel. As always, Brendan Teets, owner and head coach here at Prime Strength. And in today's video, we're gonna teach you how to not tip over in the squat and show you how I went from this. To this. So as you can see, both of those were maximal squat attempts. However, one of them, I lost a ton of position, got bent over, and in the other one, years later, I'm squatting to a maximal standard and maintaining very upright posture and midfoot balance in my squat. We're going to show you exactly how to do that. Now, if you're someone who deals with tipping over in the squat, this video, along with another video I'm going to mention at the end, are going to be absolutely critical for you to watch. So stay tuned, and we're going to touch on, in today's video, specifically one of the main reasons people deal with tipping over in the squat but what you have to understand is there's many components to this there are many issues that can cause someone to tip over in the squat we're going to cover the most common one now quickly let's define what tipping over in the squat is with the cause we're addressing today which this i find is the most common error that leads to people tipping over in the squat again there's many reasons why someone might be tipping over but in this case let's take a look at my client matt here and his maximal squat attempt from before we started working together matt you can see here out of the hole of the squat his knees shoot back really far his chest collapses forward and he's unable to get from the mid portion to lockout because his hips can't get back under the bar this is the same thing with Kristen who also actually just made an amazing video on this and that's what inspired me doing this video today you can see she also missed this 275 squat because her hips shifted back her knees receded out of the hole of the squat causing her to tip over and what's happening here is they're actually missing on position rather than all-out strength which we never want to do as a power lifter now first before we address how to fix this we have to understand what's causing this knee recession or this good morning squat in this case in the case of whenever you see the knee shooting back out of the hole, it's most commonly caused by weak quads and weak external hip rotators or your outer glutes. Basically, your quads are being removed out of the game and you're shifting tension into the hip extensors, specifically the glute max, hamstrings and low back and adductors. And what's happening is this helps you kind of skip the difficult part out of the hole of the squat where your quads are under the most demand and it shifts some of that tension to the hips. But when it happens too egregiously, we end up not being able to actually get the hips back under us near the mid portion to lock out. And it's causing us again to miss by position rather than strength. While this will happen no matter how much you try to resist it at very maximal loads, it should never happen to the point it's so egregious that you're tipping forward and losing midfoot balance and your ability to get your hips back under the bar. Most people should miss a squat just a few inches out of the hole or if you do miss midway up, it's purely just because you ran out of gas and strength, not because you're out of position. Now let's dive into the fixes on this, specifically the movement weak point training we're gonna implement. Some of our more red viewers are already gonna know the answer here, but you're not gonna actually know how to do this the right way. So let me explain. The movements you're gonna implement to fix this are, are real simple, high bar squats and front squats. The reason being is these movements cause the knees to move more forward in your bottom position of your squat. They're more quad dominant. And because of this, you're gonna be able to train a more knee forward position, which is really what we're trying to achieve. We don't want those knees to recede back out of the hole of the squat. But this is where understanding biomechanics and strength adaptation comes into play. What you must understand is that positional strength plays a huge role here. Let's look at week one of Matt doing front squats under me. What I quickly realized was that he was still seeing a lot of knee recession even in his front squat. Sure, not as much as his back squat, but this movement is almost useless to us, especially done the way he did it in week one, if his knees just recede the same out of the hole of the squat. It's not so much that we have weak quads, it's that we have weak quads when coming out of the hole or the bottom position of the squat. And so not only do we have to implement some high bar work and some front squats with mats, but we have to implement them in a positional dominant way. So on week number two, you'll notice I critiqued Matt and he was able to keep his knees and hips much more under the bar on the front squat. What you'll also notice is the weight's actually a little bit lighter. Oh my God, what a shocker. He's actually now strengthening the position we need to achieve with an inappropriate load. In the previous week, he was strengthening a position that we don't want to achieve with more load, which is gonna to come to the better outcome, you think? It's key when you're understanding how to fix a weak point 
or something like a large technical error like a knee recession in the squat, you have to understand it's more than just implementing a weak point exercise. You have to approach the exercise correctly. Same thing with his high bar work. He quickly told me that this is lighter than any of the high bar work he's done previously when he tries to force his knees forward in the hole. This is because he's never trained this position very aggressively. And because of that, he's weaker in this position. So his high bar squats, they started off at week one at 185 pounds, but quickly by week two, he was already at 255 pounds. He was able to load tons of weight from week one to week two because it happened that quick. How quickly his neurological activity is adapting to this new position is very, very quick because his quads are strong. It's just they're not strong in that coordinated pattern of keeping the knees forward in the hole. So this won't always happen, but the point here being is that that over time, you'll find you can actually quickly remedy this if you're just very controlled with how you approach these exercises. So we're going to implement high bar squats and front squats on a secondary and tertiary squatting day. Matt is currently squatting three times per week. One day is his low bar competition style squat. His second day is a high bar squat. And then his third day is this front squat. But on all three of those days, actually, we're ensuring his knees stay forward. Now, it doesn't just stop there. Like I said, on his main low bar heavy competition style squat day, we're ensuring that Matt focuses on coming out of that hold of squat with his knees staying forward. What you'll notice whenever I do very heavy comp squat work, unless I mess something up, I'm always very adamant about staying in position. All my grindiest squats... I have achieved while keeping my knees forward and out. You'll notice earlier I mentioned the hip external rotators having a component here. If your knees cave in and your uh, hip external rotators kind of shut off and you turn it more to the adductors and we have some knee cave, that'll almost always go hand in hand with your quads um, or your knees rather receding out of the hole of the squat. So for me, the two cues I really like to implement here are knees forward and hips open when I actually come out of the hole to squat. Your body's gonna wanna deviate out of that, but you have to almost force yourself into position. And this is what I recommend when taking on this task of trying to fix this issue. I would say shave off five to 10% of your usual working weight. So whatever you think you would hit for your top sets on the day of your low bar squat days, I would shave five to 10% load off of that and focus on maintaining position. Because if you don't actually fix this in your comp style squat, meaning your low bar squat, you're never actually gonna have carryover from the high bar and front squat work because now you have to implement it into your actual squat pattern with lighter loads, strengthen that position in a specific way, and then let it come up over time. And before you know it, you'll be able to be like me where your knees do not recede back, even though mine used to egregiously do so. Now, it's worth noting that you're going to need access to ranges of motion that some of you may be limited in in order to achieve this. So for instance, your ankle dorsi flexion, being able to actually even just move your knees forward more in a squat can really help out a lot of you. And in Kristen's video, which I linked in the description box and in the comment section, she covers some awesome drills as well as exercises and even touches on the movement weak point training that we talked about today and, and how to approach your stability and mobility and positional work of your ankles in order to achieve this. Because again, a lot of you are going to be so restricted from poor movement pattern being built up over the last year or two or three, four years that you've been squatting. And you're going to find that you actually don't even even have access to these ranges of motion. So I want you to go watch Kristen's video because if you don't do that stuff, you might not even be able to achieve the positions we're trying to get you into in this video. Now, briefly to touch on programming, you need to have a solid program to be able to achieve this as well. I prefer DUP. So daily undulating periodization is just a fancy way of saying that you have various adaptation goals that you try to chase in your training week or micro cycle. So you might have a heavy low bar day where you're working on your position on the main squat. You might have a lighter high bar day where you're working on your weak point training with the quads and then maybe even a third squat day like the front squat where you're attacking different areas and different rep ranges and different adaptation goals on various days of your training week in the squat all of our programs over at prime-strength.com are set up in this way and we have optional weak point exercises that you get to choose from and high bar and front squats are always in there as an option because this is such a common problem so if you're interested in attacking this and you want to see
series program to help you out. Go check out our group coaching. It's very affordable. For those of you who can't afford our group coaching and just want some free help, I have a ton of videos on programming, which I'll try to link in our description box that really cover how I set up my programs. And honestly, if you studied like most of my videos that are free here on YouTube, you really could program similar to me. It's just going to require hours and hours of work and practice over the years. So if you're interested, check out those videos. Go watch Kristen's video. That's the most important. And give the video a thumbs up. Share the video. It really does help out when you guys do that. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.